Let's look at deploying Zoom for macOS via Intune. We'll head straight to the console. So here we've got the uh, Endpoint Manager Admin Center. Just going to jump down into Apps. From Apps, we're going to go to Mac OS. We'll choose Add. And from Add, we have the list of Mac OS apps available to us. So we've got M365 apps. That's Office. We don't want to do that right now. Edge. Nope. Not interested in deploying that for now. Defender for Endpoint. Nope. Other. We have Line of Business. And we have macOS app DMG. Now for Zoom, let's take a look at what Zoom offers us from an installer's perspective. I'm going to use the Zoom desktop client for meetings for IT admins. Just choose that and you can see it gives us a file called Zoom installer IT.pkg. So that means we know exactly which type of file we need to use. Back to app type. Now we've got the option of macOS app DMG. That's not a PKG at all. So we need to move on. Go up to line of business. You can see here. The third one in the list there is Mac OS PKG, so we're on the right track. Simply choose select here and choose the app package file. There it is. Picks up a bit of information about that. It's got the name of the app package, the platform, the size of it, and whether it's mobile application management enabled. In this case, it's not, so we'll choose OK. And the name hasn't really come up very cleanly. From this perspective so we're gonna to have to change that a little bit let's call it zoom for meetings and we could give it a better description let's give it zoom for meetings again you could probably think of a better description than that in your own time and then the publisher would be zoom and here we get to choose the minimum operating system that this package will deploy on if the user doesn't have a Mac with this particular operating system, then it simply won't be available to them. So I'm going to choose the Ventura at the bottom there, the latest version. And we get the option to ignore the app version. Now, if we ignore the app version, then when the app auto updates, then it won't automatically revert back to the previous version when Intune detects a change in version, which is fantastic because stay tuned, I will be talking about how to configure auto updating with Zoom for macOS in a few moments. And now we have the option for install as managed. This is set to no by default. It's only available on macOS 11 and above. And this allows you to be able to uninstall the application once you've managed to install it. Now I would love to choose yes on this because that would allow us to uninstall it. But you can see what happens when I choose yes. It says the Mac LOB app can only be installed as managed when the uploaded package contains a single app. And if we just scroll down a tiny bit, you can see it doesn't contain a single app. It contains a ton of bundles here. So we're going to have to choose no on that. And if you need to, you can remove specific bundles from this particular application. At this point, we're also able to add a category. We can perhaps choose collaboration and social and business and then scroll down. If you want to add any more information to this list, such as the owner, maybe add a logo, please feel free to do that. We'll choose next and we're going to assign it to a group of users and that will be my app zoom users to select and next and create now the thing we need to remember is that we haven't yet configured zoom that's something we need to do outside of the application deployment so it's currently uploading which is great i'm going to open a new tab and start configuring this application so one of the configuration items i want to push to zoom on mac os is that it automatically updates now let's take a look at how Zoom recommend you do that on the latest versions. If we go to this website here, which I'll put in the description below, it says that if the device is macOS 5.11.3 or higher, and it's managed by ZDM, GPO, PList, or MSI, which in this case it will be, it will be a PList, we can no longer use Zoom auto-update and self-updating channel. We need to use the newer auto-update policies, which is this one here. And for some reason, this website is not quite formatting correctly. I'll just drag that across. So we have AU2 enable auto update in a P list and that is Boolean, which means true or false. And it's defaulting to enabled. Let's stick it in the P list just in case. And then we also want to choose, take a look at the set auto update channel. And that is set to zero or slow by default, which is fine. And if we scroll down, we have this install at idle time. So if there's no current meeting, a phone call or contact center engagement, and if there's no upcoming meeting, and if the screen is locked or the screen saver is active, then it, the user is determined to be idle. 
so it will automatically update. And you can see it's set to it's Boolean, so true or false, and it's set to disabled by default. So let's take a look at this plist then that we need to push down to this device. This is the standard plist that you can download from the Zoom website. I'll show you where to get that in a moment. I'll put it in the description below as well. But I've also added these two bits here. So we have enable auto update true and install at idle time true. Those are the things that will be allowing us to configure that these devices are automatically updated. And now we need to deploy this to our devices. So just move that out of the way again, go to our console, go to devices, Mac OS. I'm going to create a configuration profile. So we choose create profile and the profile type is going to be a template. And if we scroll down, we'll see we have a preference file, which is that P list that we were just talking about a second ago. So we'll choose that and choose create. Now we get to type in a name, give it something meaningful so that you can remember what it's about later on without having to dig through the plist file itself. You can also give it a description if you think that will help you understand and remember what this profile is all about later on. Let's choose next. And you have this preference domain name. This is a universal name that we can use to make sure we're getting the preference file in the right place. So that bit here is, is just an example. We need to tap in the correct plist preference domain name. For Zoom, that's exactly the one we need, US Zoom Conflict plist, and we need to select a file. This is the plist file that I was just generating earlier on. So we'll just grab that, and there it is. Choose Open, and there it is in the browser for us, just to check that it looks correct. Got this extra two keys there for me, which is brilliant. So we'll choose Next, and we're going to deploy this to a group of users, and it's going to be those Zoom users that I just deployed the app to. So we'll choose next and create. And that file is now going down to those managed Mac OS devices. It would be awesome if you could hit the like button and subscribe and perhaps leave a comment if you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.